you can set up your camp or lay out your camp is in a triangular shape. Maybe about 100 yards apart are your sleeping area, cooking area, and food storage. The other way to, to do that within that triangle shape, too, is to make sure your cooking area and food storage areas are downwind of your sleeping area. Winds can change, so that's not always super effective, but if you know the winds are generally going to be from a certain direction for your time there, then you can plan a little bit for that. See that lone pine up on that hill over there? What are we actually doing right now? The kids are just wild out there. They're wild. But they're having a good time, you know? They're having a good time. This is Untamed, Unbroken, The Adventurer's Guide, and I'm your host, Blake Bredesen. Welcome to part six of our wilderness series. Today we are getting into bear proofing, wildlife safety, being bear aware. That's what we're going to be talking about the most. If you're out in the wilderness, you're going to encounter wildlife. You may encounter bears. There's other animals to be aware of too. If you're in in with wolves or moose, mountain lions, just to be aware of those two, constantly kind of looking for sign, keeping your head on a swivel, being situationally aware of your surroundings is the biggest thing. Using your eyes, using your ears. Uh, let's dive into bears though. There's two types of bears. We got black bears all over North America. They're more common. They're more adaptable. They're found in forests, swamps, even the fringes of urban areas, grizzlies, larger, uh, found typically in more remote areas, mountainous areas, the western part of the U.S., Canada, up into Alaska. You have brown bears. The, those are coastal, typically bigger even than grizzlies. Grizzlies are inland. But just knowing before you go, know that you're going to be in bear country. You may encounter bears. And just kind of recognizing bear signs, identifying their presence is helpful. It's part of that situational awareness, bear tracks, maybe marks on trees and that type of thing. Seasonal bear behavior is another thing to be aware of. Spring, they're coming out of hibernation. They're looking for food, can be more aggressive. Fall, they enter the phase called hyperphagia and they are looking to fatten up for winter may make them uh, more likely to approach campsites in search of food. Although certain wilderness areas with designated campsites that are really popular, like the boundary waters, black bears may frequent certain campsites anyway, if those campsites aren't kept as clean as they maybe should be. But let's talk about camp and kind of setting up camp in a way that is going to help you just avoid situations or be a little bit safer or on that safer side when it comes to being bear aware, that type of thing. So if you are in grizzly country, one of the ways, or even just in black bear country too, one of those ways that you can set up your camp or lay out your camp is in a triangular shape. Maybe about a hundred yards apart are your sleeping area, cooking area, and food storage. The other way to to do that within that triangle shape, too, is to make sure your cooking area and food storage areas are downwind of your sleeping area. Winds can change, so that's not always super effective, but if you know the winds are generally going to be from a certain direction for your time there, then you can plan a little bit for that. So that's kind of camp layout. You know, choosing your campsite, don't camp in, if you are in bear country, don't camp in super dense brush, you know, camp in opener areas where you have some visuals uh, and you can kind of see things, especially from your, like from your tent, you can look out, you can see your cooking area, you can look out and you can see where your food is stored, that type of thing. Another thing you can do when it comes to setting up camp is electrifying your campsite. You set up a little electrical fence, maybe around your sleeping area. Maybe you want to set up electrical or some kind of uh, alarm system that if they hit a tripwire, makes a bunch of noise. 
uh, things clank around around your, maybe your food storage area, whatever it may be, things to think about. Bear canisters, they're a must. They're designed to be bear resistant. Nothing's bear proof. All right. Nothing, nothing's bear proof, but you can make things that they make things that are more resistant to bears. If you can, if you have an, the ability to hang your food, even if it's in a bear canister, hang it, put the canister, you know, if it's got a little clip or something that you can hang it or put it in a bag and hang it that way. That would be my recommendation is you hang that thing. If you can about 12 feet off the ground, four feet out from the tree, <clears throat> that's what's recommended in the in the Boundary Waters area, and that's a good way, good way to do it uh, if you can. If you can't hang your food, they do make bear canisters and bear kind of bear bags that are almost they're like bite proof, claw proof, where they have a really hard time getting into them. They make specific I forget what they're called exactly, but I've seen people use them up in the boreal, and they just tie them around a tree away from camp. Cooking practices is the another thing. You know, cook and eat downwind, like I said before, of your sleep area. And then just, it's really just about cleaning up and not, not leaving a mess of food or waste around your camp and managing that scent a little bit. Avoid scented products in your tent. You know, hang toothpaste, hang garbage. Uh, put that all in the bear bag area. Yeah, different toiletries, you know, deodorant, that type of thing. You just want to give yourself the the best chance possible that a bear's not going to come into your tent or sniffing around your your tent when you're sleeping. And you can avoid that by throwing all that stuff in the bear bag. <clears throat> so just be mindful of that and just make sure that that camp area is clean and tidy. If you do encounter a, I mean, one way, if you're, if you're just hiking and you're walking around, you're not, and not hunting. If you're on a hiking trip, backpacking trip, being a little louder or being with, if traveling in groups with other people, they're going to hear you coming usually before, before you even know they're there. And they'll just skedaddle, you know, and you'll never even know. Now, what you want to avoid is surprising a bear. And so that's why if you can, you make a little bit of noise here and there as you're walking down the trail. If you're hunting, that's a different scenario. So you got to, you know what you're getting into if you are hunting in bear country. So, Briar, coming to sit with me? Oh, okay. You want your necklace on? Okay, one second. Don't. <laughs> Are you going? Yeah. Let's see here. Hold on, hold on. To go? Do you want to hang out for this? Gator. So that goes, you know, encountering a bear just while you're hiking. You want to be a little bit louder. Just as a preventative measure, if you do see a bear, stay calm. If they don't see you right away, just slowly back on out of there. If they do see you, just speak in a calm, loud, firm voice, right? You wave your arms up in the air, make yourself bigger, grab some pots and pans if you have to, make some noise, uh, just getting them to move on. Sometimes they don't always want to move on and they're very curious as to what you are. Most of the time it's just curiosity. And they're not actively hunting you, but in that rare event, you know, attack. I don't know how you prepare for a bear attack. What you know what I mean? Like, what do you do? You don't know how you're going to react in that situation until it happens. But generally, experts will say fight back against black bears, play dead with grizzlies while lying on your stomach, hands behind your neck, kind of protecting your neck, protect your core. You know, things that you can use bear spray as a deterrent into pistols as a deterrent, or if you're, uh, I mean, shotguns work great too with some double up buck or something like that, but those get a little heavy, but bear spray, you know, either on a chest rig attached to your chest or right on your hip, just know how to use it before you go. Make sure you know what, 
what you're doing there. Don't spray it into the wind. It's just going to blow back in your face and really screw you up. You know, in summary, it's just knowing where you're going, knowing if there's going to be bears in the area, knowing what wildlife, other wildlife is in the area and planning accordingly. Okay. You have those options. You need to know how to how to properly store your food. Keep your keep camp clean. Make some noise if you can as you're hiking through the woods or or especially through thicker areas. If you're in that in some thicker brush, making noise, letting the wildlife know you're there is is better than just silently going through. Uh, when you silently walk through, as in hunting, that's when you get those surprise interactions, higher risk of attack. It's also why hunters, particular bow hunters out west, are just they're at a higher risk uh, than other backpackers or even in the same area. So that does it for bear awareness. Just a short one. Just want to make sure you guys are prepped. You know what's going on. Know how to hang your food and store that food. That's a big one. So stay wild. Thank you for sticking around. If you've enjoyed the show, don't forget to subscribe. Leave us a rating and review. Even one word, it helps a ton. Sincerely appreciate you guys. Thank you all. And we'll see you on the next one. Stay wild. You've been listening to Untamed, Unbroken, a Lone Pine Adventures original podcast.